Hey guys, what up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the new Dior Spring 2022 collection. I don't know what it is about Dior that keeps me coming back because as you saw my worst of videos, <laughs> there was a lot of things from Dior that I didn't like at all but at the same time I love the direction that Dior has been going and their collections have still been really exciting me it's just their eyeshadow palettes that are really hit or miss but for the most part whenever they come out with a collection I'm very very attracted to it so their spring 2022 collection launched on Selfridges so I ordered all of these items from Selfridges I will have them linked down below for you guys as of now not yet released on the Dior website they have like an ad for it on Google when you search it. It says discover the spring 2022 collection, the Dior makeup for the season that brings out the complexion's glow. Limited is editions shades and new opalescent finish and that's it. And then you click on it and then it takes you to a blank page. So I don't know when it's coming to Dior, but they're obviously preparing the page for it. <laughs> but anyways, if you are located in the US, Selfridges is a bit weird. It's very, very expensive. They are a UK based brand to get it shipped over to the US. But if you pay a flat annual fee of $60, then you get free shipping from them all year. It's not worth it for everybody to pay $60 on shipping. Absolutely not. But if you're like me, you love the luxury launches, Selfridges gets a lot of luxury launches first. And a number of times they get a lot of limited edition stuff first. I've noticed for me, it's been worth it. Obviously because I have a YouTube channel, but they really do have some good sales. Sometimes with the exchange rate, some products are actually a little bit less money. For me, it's worth it. If you order a lot of luxury makeup, Selfridges is an awesome source. To pick up those items. So I had to pay my $60 fee for the shipping this time because I guess it's been a year since I've paid for it. It was sad, but I'm set for the year. Free shipping from Selfridges for the rest of the year. And I will say, despite them being across the ocean, I get the stuff fast. So if it's something you're interested in, I like that feature. Anyways, when it comes in Selfridges, I got my stuff in a couple of these bags, which normally I throw away or give to somebody else, but I'm gonna keep them this time. I don't know why, but I feel the urge to keep them. So quickly, let me go over what I picked up from the collection. I know I'm talking a lot, sorry. <laughs> Just so you can see what you're in for. I picked up both of the Trio Oblique trios. Should be interesting if you know my thoughts on last year's. I picked up two different shades of the Hydrating Blush Balm. I might be asking for a bruise in with these. I picked up one Dior Addict Lip Maximizer and then one lipstick. So I got a little bit from most of the sections that they have. This collection is very poorly marketed. Dior is just like not really sharing anything about this collection. It doesn't really have a name. It only secretly came out in Selfridges and they're not really advertising it as a spring collection. So I will have all of the individual items listed for you guys, but collectively it is a beautiful collection collection. I'm going to have timestamps if you're only interested in certain products, but let's get into the business, shall we? So the first item that I'm going to apply, as much as I want it to be the eyeshadows, I actually want to get the balm sticks on my face first so that I can set my face with powder. <laughs> I just, I need to. I'm wearing the brand new Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. I picked up this one and the matte one. They just reformulated these to make them clean. I will have the video up, I believe should be on Tuesday reviewing both of the new formulations but I'm just testing this one out today this is not part of the spring collection so I'm not putting it in this video uh, but my skin looks beautiful I don't have any powder on by the way the skin glow looks really nice <laughs> okay so let's talk about these here stick glow limited edition blush balm these sound like something that I really could hate because they're very similar to a product that Chanel has that I hate but we'll see how much pigmentation it gives you so these are going to be $34.50 each that's US dollars you get eight grams of product this is a limited edition formula and I picked up both of the shades that it came in rose glow and opal glow it says just to apply directly to the skin. I don't I don't have too much information on it. 
But I don't have a lick of powder on my face, so that's why I wanted to try these without powder. I do have that Skin Glow Foundation, Dior Concealer, and this Jaclyn Cosmetics Cream Bronzer in Sandy Down. On the back of the box, it says, Stick Glow is Dior's first hydrating blush stick for a healthy glow effect. Featuring an incredibly lightweight texture that melts into the skin with a luminous finish. Okay. First, let's go into Rose Glow. So it's just pretty nice silver packaging. I like that you have the color here. This has a shelf life that I do not see specified on the box or the component, so I can't tell you. But this is made in France. So this is what the product looks like. Oh no, I don't know how much I'm going to like this. It doesn't look like it's going to give me much. Uh, I was hoping we'd get a little bit more than this. I don't know if you can see. There are some glitter particles up in here, which I don't know that I like. I feel like, can I put this on my lips? Honestly, this is really pretty on the lips. It added some hydration. It feels more comfortable. I like this texture a little more than the Chanel. If you know the Chanel Essential Bombs, these feel a little less sticky to me. Okay, let's see. Oh, we're, you can kind of see that. <laughs> Honestly, the price, $34.50 for a luxury brand, it's not terrible. It's actually giving me a little bit more pink than I thought it would. For complexions, though, I don't know how much this is going to show up, but if you're very fair, you actually might like this, but it does give that kind of glossy look to the cheek. I'm using a Morphe M536 just to kind of push it into the skin. But it really is blending in seamlessly with the products I have underneath. It's not giving me much color, but it is leaving a slight pink hue. And it's really a great consistency in terms of working into the skin and being really easy to use. You definitely could just pop this on with your fingers, but it's not going to give you too much. Comparing it to the Chanel Balm Stick, this is definitely less thick. So I think that actually makes it easier to just apply straight to the face. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't think it's necessary, but I really don't hate it. And it might be nice for a really pretty natural flush to the skin in the summer if you like something super duper natural. Okay, but let's go into the one that I'm super excited about. This collection has a running theme of opalescent shades. They have a lip gloss that's opal. They have a nail polish that's opal, which I tried to order, but they wouldn't ship it overseas. So I had to know. We'll see, I'm excited about this. So this is what the bottom color looks like. And and it looks like a lip balm. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Do we see any opalescent to it? Not really. It has, so again, those kind of slight glitters, which are very, very fine that the pink one had. It gives that wet, glossy dew to the skin, which is very editorial. I don't do editorial makeup, so that's not my speed. But... It's kind of cute. It gives, I don't know if you can see, there's little flecks of glitter that you might be able to see, but it gives a very glass-like glow to it. Now, keep in mind, I don't have any powder underneath, but from what I'm seeing, neither color disrupted the foundation underneath. Honestly, if this type of formula and level of pigmentation, the balm kind of product is your jam, these are kind of neat. They're not my jam though. These are not products that I really love, but I'm honestly not angry at these. These are probably one of my favorite balm formulations, which I typically don't really like. They feel very hydrating. They do have a slight stickiness on the skin, which is a little less than pleasant. I don't hate them. I definitely don't think you need both, but if you feel like this is a product that you need, I mean, you can see that glow that the opal is giving. It's really, really pretty. So that's that. I'm not mad. Now, what also just launched on Selfridges from Dior is this Forever Cushion Powder. It's $52. Mineral Glow. I almost picked it up, but I was like, nah, girl. I'm gonna just use my Too Faced Born This Way setting powder for this video. <laughs> Save myself $52. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of powder. Let's see how it does 
over top of these products. The glow on these definitely lightened up a lot. So if you want that wet, dewy look, don't set your face with powder over top, which I expect it to happen. That's what happens when you put powder on top of those types of products. But I was just curious. I would really only suggest those bone sticks if you're into the no makeup makeup kind of vibe. Like I'm gonna put on some powder blush over top of this because I need some powder blush. All right, let's get into what I had to get into right now. Selfridges says this is exclusive to Selfridges, so I don't know if that's subject to change, but I picked up both of the Trio Bleak eyeshadow palettes that came out, $57 each. That is quite a price, as you know, for a trio. Last year, I tried the Trio Bleak trios for the first time. They launched the same time of year, different shades. I absolutely despise them. The biggest waste of money ever. They were just terrible and firm and didn't give you much, so... I had to pick both of these up to just see if they were better. They say that these are limited edition. So let's take a look. Ooh, they look gorgeous though. Can't deny how gorgeous that they look. So this first one is Coral Glow. This honestly looks stunning. These are going to be made in Italy and they have a six month shelf life, which is very, very short for powder. Whether you choose to follow that guideline is up to you, but let's swatch these, let's see. I hate to ruin the embossing, but nothing feels really loosely pressed, but these do feel better than last year. They don't have that weird sticky formulation that was on the bottom that you got no color from. So let's see. Oh, these look pretty. Quite soft, especially this last one right here, which is kind of that opal shade, but this shade right here, how beautiful does that look? It's like a golden, almost golden orange, almost holographic shade. Very pretty. My socks aren't knocked off, but I think it's prettier than last year's. Let's swatch the other one. So this one is Mineral Rose. I think I'm kind of feeling the coral glow more, but let's see. Oh. So this bottom formula kind of has like a lid topper texture. Not very powdery feeling. You feel like you don't pick too much and you can kind of see how it looks on the finger is kind of how it swatches. These all have such a pretty glow to them. Okay, this one I feel like isn't as impressive, but with these luxury formulas, sometimes they just don't swatch as good or as pretty as they look on the eyelid. I feel like I wanna play with some of these colors on the cheek. I, they look gorgeous swatch, but definitely on the softer side. I've kind of come to expect that sometimes with these Dior formulas. I'm gonna start off with Coral Glow on this side. I'm just gonna use my Dior Forever Skin Correct as my base. Using a Luxie 229, we're going into the middle shade in Coral Glow. Just taking a little bit. And I am going to just pat this in the outer corner. So this is not a matte shade. There's shimmer to this. This is a glowy palette. So if you require a matte shade, you're going to have to dig in other palettes. But it's very, very pretty. And on the eyelid, it's giving us some pigmentation. Just want to blend it out a little bit more with a clean brush. I'm going to blend it away. Let's add just a little bit more. It is a softer shade, so it really isn't standing its ground. But it does build. Let's not over blend that. <laughs> Using the Sonia G brush, we're going into the top shade. So this is like that holographic shade that looks really unique and beautiful. Oh, that's pretty. I love this shade. This is by far my favorite shade in both of the palettes. It is more soft, but that's something that you have to know that you appreciate if you buy this trio. If you don't like soft shadows or you don't think they're worth the money, oh my gosh, don't buy this. But it's quite pretty. I'm telling you, it's like a holographic shade. It's really soft and cute. Then let's go in with the glow shade. It has like a pink shimmer to it and I'm just gonna pat it. Oddly like a pink highlight. Pretty, but I'm not like in love with it. I think this shade right here is blending away a little bit too easy. But you get this pretty kind of glowy, popsicle look. I want to use these as blushes. So I'm gonna mix the top two shades. Might regret this. I'm just gonna pop it on the cheek. My gosh, that's so pretty. These actually make 
pretty blushes because they have that glow there. If you like monochromatic looks, I would definitely go for something like this. Then I'm gonna use the glow shade, which is kind of loosely packed. It does have glitter in it, but it can double as a highlight. I would say it's prettier on somebody who has more of a medium skin tone as a highlight, but I feel like this particular color is gonna thrive in the style of application because it wasn't picking up too well on the eye, but blown out on the cheek. Really like utilizing this palette in that fashion. So let's try the other one now. I'm gonna do kind of this same exact style on this side. Hopping on into the mineral rose, we're gonna start off with the middle shade. I wish they had just gone ahead and put their regular matte formulation from their permanent quint line in here because that formula is just so much better than this. Like this is fine, this is pretty, but I'm not wowed by it, you know? I would just like a little bit more depth from this or have it have a bit more ability to build because it does blend away if you over blend. And with it being the deepest shade, I just don't think that should be the case. But it's a beautiful tone of rose, I will say that. Looks absolutely gorgeous. Let's hop on into the top shade right here. These have such a pretty glow to them. The top shade in both of these trios. Talk about a gorgeous glow that they have. I find that I'm getting a little bit more depth with this trio. So if you have a medium or deeper complexion, this is giving me like a little bit more. It's pretty. And let's try using this last shade with a brush kind of pop it in the inner corner. So the embossing of this last shade is going down very, very fast because it's a looser packed formula. I mean, you can't deny that this isn't a pretty glowy, rosy kind of look. I definitely want to apply the cheek again because I just think these top two shades mix together to be a beautiful glowing blush formula. How pretty. Okay, and then lastly, Again, this one does have those glitter particles, but it's pretty. I don't know, both trios, I think I like the coral glow more, but the quality on the rose glow, I think is a tad bit better, just in terms of pigmentation and stuff. But the coral glow is stunning. I normally don't prefer the warmer tones, but to me, this looks prettier. I mean, I'm not wowed by these trios. I they're, they're not worth $57, but I like them. I think they're soft and beautiful. I would still urge you if you want to try a good eyeshadow formulation in terms of Dior, you need to get the permanent line of Quince. Those are still much better. I don't know why Dior keeps coming out with these kind of formulas, but this is a different style of formula. Think more Asian style makeup, a little bit softer, more monochromatic. I think they work beautifully on the cheek though. So it's like a right here, like not quite a thumbs up, but not like even to the side, just like in between. Okay, let me finish the rest of my makeup and then we'll finish off with the lips. All right, so all I did was that smoked a little bit of a plum shadow just for some definition and some mascara. But let's get on to the final two lip products that I picked up. So I'm actually gonna go in first with the Dior Addict Lip Maximizer because I wanna show you how it looks on bare lips. I had to get this, you guys. I just, it looks so pretty online. So let me show you. I picked up the shade Opal. I just had to know. So first of all, I love this formula from Dior. So even if this turns out clear, I don't care. I love this formula. There's two colors that came out in this collection. There's this one and then there's Topaz, which is like a brighter, not a red, but it's like a raspberry shade. So these are $34 each, but if you're a lip gloss fan, you have to give the maximizers a try. They're so good. Let me show you what the opal looks like. It's mostly clear. You can see there's some iridescent shimmers in there, but definitely for the most part, it's going to be more so of a clear gloss, which for me, I was fine with. Let me show you. The opalescent effect, as you can see, is kind of like a pink glitter is snuck in there. So if you put it all over the lips, kind of gives a pink reflect as you turn. It's really, really pretty. It has even a little bit of that purple in there that you find with a lot of opal shades. And these lip maximizers, they do have a little bit of a tingle to them because they're they're a lip plumper, but I, I find it very satisfying feeling. It's not really painful at all, but if you can't stand any type of plumping formula, you won't like this, but it's very, very subtle. And it's a perfect formula. It's like a medium thickness. It's not super watery of a gloss, but it also isn't super thick either. And there's no 
stickiness to this. I just love this formula. Is this a must have? Probably not, but I love this formula. So I do recommend this and I think this one is really, really fun. But let's get on to the lipstick next. That was a quick one. I love this formula already. I only have one other shade in my collection. So I jumped at the opportunity for this shade. And the other shade looks like a very pretty raspberry color, but I had to know about this shade, you know? So. I recommend that one. I like that one. <laughs> okay, and the last and final product that I picked up from this collection was just a lipstick. I like Dior's lipstick. I don't love them, but I picked up Mineral Peach. So it comes in the typical Dior packaging. And then this is the outer packaging. Again, just their permanent line packaging. And here is mineral peach really pretty i went for the more wearable color so this looks is kind of expensive it's 37 dollars like there are two shades in the collection there's this one which is mineral peach and then there's cherry topaz which is like a pinky cherry type of shade so let's see how mineral peach is going to look obviously mineral peach is supposed to go with the coral eye and then cherry topaz is going to complement the rose glow a little bit more very slight fragrance to the lipstick but nothing crazy I don't really love the fragrance though. So this is a more sheer formula. I don't know if you can see, I did that quick swipe. You don't get too much color. You have to build on it to get the color. Let me show you by swatch. See, very, very sheer. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about that for $37. Ooh, that is a pretty color, but you do have to build a bit. I'm gonna say the same thing about this lipstick that I've said about every single other item in this collection. I like it, but it's not a must have. This peach though, it definitely complements the peachy eye. Like these are definitely this whole look right here with the cheek, the eye, the lips, match made in heaven. But I don't really love this lipstick formula. It's fine. It's a pretty peach color, but <laughs> this is not worth $37. Let me collect myself and I will be right back. So there were a couple other lip products that came out that I didn't pick up. So first is a new Dior Attic Lip Glow Lip Balm, which I know a lot of people love. It's $34, and they came out with it in the shade Opal. And you guys know I'm hyped about that Opal shade. So if you like that formula, that would be cool. I just didn't pick it up. There also is the Dior Attic Lip Maximizer Serum in Universal Clear, which I think is like a plumping lip serum. I don't know. I didn't do my research on that one. I wasn't interested at all. And then, oh, the nail polishes. I'm so sad they wouldn't ship to the US, but there are three colors in this collection. The Mineral Peach, which is the same as the lipstick color. Rose Quartz, which is gonna be more of the rosy shade, but what I wanted was opal. So I'm sad about that. But that's the whole Dior Spring 2022 collection. I don't think it is a collection that you urgently need to buy. I actually, I liked everything in the collection, but just with Dior's prices, definitely not needs. I would say for me, my favorite item in the collection is the Lip Maximizer in Opal. I just think it's so pretty. Again, it really is mostly just a clear lip gloss with like pink sheen to it, but I love this formula so much. And I think this is so pretty to look at. As far as the eyeshadow trios, they're fine. They're good. They're not the worst I've had from Dior, I will say that. I'm more impressed with them as a cheek palette than actually on the eyes. I think they are so pretty on the cheek. Like, I'd grab these to use these on the cheek and then just put them on the eyes because I already had them. So if you're a cheek person, you actually might be more partial to these. I, I think they look absolutely beautiful for a glowy blush. But for $57... <laughs> you know, if you have the money, they're pretty. <laughs> and then the stick glows. I actually like this formulation. They aren't must-haves, of course, but I think if you like that glossy cheek effect, these are a really easy to use formula. I'm impressed with these, honestly. They're not just a product that I would reach for too often. And the lipstick, yeah, it's a pretty color, you know, what it's if you like the Dior formulation, again, it's a pretty color and it's good for the monochromatic aspect of picking up the whole collection and getting this perfectly curated peachy look on your face. So all together, gorgeous, but individually this doesn't really excite me, but I like it, but I don't love it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and you found it helpful. Again, stay tuned in a couple days. I will have my reviews of the two new foundations that they just reformulated, but I can tell you so far so good. I'm loving how the skin glow is looking. You'll find out the rest. If you're interested in shopping any of these items, I will have them linked down below in the description box for you. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.